What's going on in the DNO insurance marketplace for 2021? For the past two years, both private and public companies purchasing DNO insurance have seen a disruption in their typical renewal process. Prior to 2019, most DNO renewals went pretty smoothly. There was competition in the marketplace for new and renewal business, prices were competitive to stable, and renewal terms were fairly consistent from year to year for about the entire decade before 2019. Then things changed. Why did they change? What happened to cause the DNO marketplace to turn the renewal process into a bit of a nightmare? There are several key issues that led up to that which we'll explain, but first let's cover some basics. Most commercial insurance buyers who have been around have probably experienced a change in the insurance market cycle. Property casualty insurance, including DNO, will move in cycles from soft market to hard market. Soft market conditions are characterized by competitive pricing, stable rates, and relatively easy underwriting. Hard market conditions, on the other hand, have a trend of firming rates, higher premiums, and more restrictive underwriting practices. In 2019, the DNO landscape changed pretty quickly into a hard market. Premiums rose, underwriting became more difficult, coverage forms had restrictions added to it, and overall, the market was just plain difficult. And that continued and grew more difficult into 2020, and 2021 doesn't look like we're going to see any relief. Certain classes of business were more impacted on rate increases than others, but most businesses saw an annual increase in the 15 to 25 percent range, with tech and life science firms seeing increases of 25 to 50 percent or more of the prior two years. In our experience, no sector saw a rate decrease since 2019. This has caused some clients to reduce their limits of coverage, increase their retentions, or both, in order to afford coverage, and 2021 will continue to present challenges. So why did the DNO marketplace shift? There are several reasons, but generally speaking, it's due to claims activity, which reached its peak in 2019 after a 10-year stretch of rate suppression. DNO rates barely moved during the decade prior to this shift when three major things happened. The first, the number of securities class action suits hit an all-time high, and this is a frequency problem. All DNO-related claim settlements reached an all-time high level, this is a severity problem, and number three, derivative action claims continue to rise. Now you may be saying, these are all public company issues, aren't they? And you'd be mostly correct, but private company DNO taps into the same bucket of capital as public company DNO. So private firms will follow the pricing of their public company cousins. Large DNO buyers who assemble big towers of protection have seen not only their primary layers increase in premium, but have probably seen their excess layers increase even more dramatically. This has been due to the severity of claims penetrating into those excess limits, which we had not seen frequently in the past. It has become clear to DNO underwriters that excess layers were priced way too thinly in the past. The 10-year average DNO settlement was just around $8 million, but in 2019, that blew up to almost $14 million, putting higher excess limits into play that beforehand infrequently had experienced losses. This, of course, is putting price pressure on lower and higher limits within a coverage program. We're also seeing underwriters retreat a portion of their capacity for a single client. Insurers who would once put up limits of $10 million in a single program are now cutting back significantly by 50% or more. This, of course, puts us as brokers in a difficult position to remarket a portion of a program vacated by a major underwriter. In most cases, we're seeing significant price increases when replacing coverage. And with all the disruption in the market, there's no fresh capital entering the market with an innovative or fresh approach to pricing or underwriting, which indicates to us that this hard market may last for several years. So what's the solution? Regardless of whether you're a private or public company, renewals cannot be approached as business as usual. 2021 will be yet another challenging year for DNO, as well as other property casualty policies within your coverage program. There are two key issues to consider. The first, start your renewal process early, meaning at least 120 days out from the renewal. And second, communicate with your broker, your underwriters, and your stakeholders. Communicating internally from the start that the renewal will pose a challenge is important. What's most important to your directors? What initiatives are on the horizon? What issues could present above average risk during the year? 
Keep in mind that DNO protects your directors, officers, and other decision makers' personal net worth. So having them engaged in the conversation early is critical. Will your firm be able to accept a premium increase? Can you afford to increase the retention on your program? Do you wish to see higher limits this year? Is adding dedicated side A protection a good idea this year? These are all questions you should be discussing with your broker early on in the process so they can go to the marketplace armed with your wish list and your desired targets. Right now we're seeing underwriters reluctant to open their renewal underwriting file much earlier than 45 days before the renewal date. This is as difficult for us as brokers as it is for insurance, but we are pushing back on underwriters to engage early so it doesn't come down to the wire, and I suggest you do the same. One element of a successful renewal is complete information. Get your renewal applications done early and be thorough. It's very frustrating for your broker and their underwriters to get incomplete renewal apps and attachments. This only slows down the process and puts your renewal submission at the bottom of the pile. Another helpful technique is to engage in underwriting calls with one or more underwriters who are interested in looking at your renewal. This can be very helpful to distill questions and answers around specific issues your company is facing pre-renewal. It's, also, it's also an opportunity for your management team to highlight your company's strengths and respond directly to your weaknesses. In fact, identifying those weaknesses well before the call and giving yourself time to strategize a response to them only will add strength to your renewal strategy. To wrap it up, 2021 is going to be a rough time for DNO as well as the rest of your property casualty renewals. Being prepared, starting early, and fully communicating with your broker are keys to successful outcomes. Have specific DNO issues you feel aren't being addressed properly? Why not give me a call? I work extensively in DNO and other management or professional lines of insurance for a variety of private and public companies and have a deep bench of expertise and resources. And I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.